Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and we are on shelf 18 of my tiny house library tour. We're on the other side of the house, and we're still behind the staircase that goes up to my loft. If you're interested in any of these books, uh, please let me know. You can send me an email, and we can work something out. You'll be supporting my trips, my trip to uh, Spain. I have a GoFundMe link as well if that interests you, but let's look at the books. I'm not sure how we're going to do this. I'll pull a couple out. All Art is Propaganda by George Orwell. It's a collection of essays. It's just great. I, um, I love Orwell's nonfiction work. It's really uh, thought-provoking. Uh, an Anthology of Poetry edited by Ezra Pound and Marcella Spann. It's Confucius to Cummings. And I thought this was great. Uh, it, it's a real um, eclectic overview of um, early, early poetry up till modern day. Uh, let me see if it... Uh, so Confucius and Homer and Sappho all the way up to E. Cummings and T.S. Eliot. Ezra, Pound, Ezra Pound's in here. <laughs> Put himself in. Um, and a great novel by Italo Calvino. This is Baron, The Baron in the Trees. Um, inventive and interesting, funny, really well written. Um, I've never read a bad thing by Calvino. I'll pull out a whole bunch more. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time is Paris Spleen by Charles Baudelaire. It's a collection of prose poems. Uh, North by Celine. Pretty much only for the Celine completists. <laughs> uh, one Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Powerful. It's quite short, but really powerful story. Um, I haven't read this. A Long, Long Way, a novel by Sebastian Barry, a finalist for the Man Booker Prize. Uh, one of my favorite nonfiction writers, John McPhee. This is Looking for a Ship. And... I think this is the cargo ships, or maybe the merchant marines. This is about the merchant marines. Really interesting. We have two giant piles of NYRB books. We're going to be going through a lot of these. Um, I'll try to do this as quickly as I can. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, it's a French writer. I don't think that I've mentioned before on my channel. This is Henry de Montrelant, Chaos and Night. This is a recommendation from my old friend Bob. Uh, the Mem Memoirs of Two Young Wives by Balzac. It's an, um, an upholstery um, novel. Letters back and forth, I believe. Uh, the Post Office Girl by Steven Zweig, however you say that. It's a great, great novel. Uh, the Secret Commonwealth of Elves, Fawns, and Fairies by Robert Kirk. Um, I really enjoyed this. It's very wintry. Um, one of my favorite collections of short stories, uh, French. This is uh, My Phantoms by Theophile Gautier. And this is translated by Richard Holmes, the uh, Coleridge biographer. A lot of supernatural stories. Uh, I love this book, uh, Shakespeare's Montaigne. So this is the Florio translation, uh, and it's just just a selection of um, the Montaigne apparently that Shakespeare read. So this is the, the actual text of um, essays that Shakespeare was reading. It's really, I, I just find things like that fascinating. Uh, the Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner. One of the 
great title by James Hogg. It's a Scottish novel. This is another uh, recommendation from my friend uh, Bob. It's around the time of reading like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and things like that. Um, okay. uh, Shepard Lee, written by himself. Robert Montgom Montgomery Bird. Um, and it's uh, like a supernatural gothic novel. Um, <clears throat> the idea of your being being able to uh, transpose itself into different bodies and living for a long time. Uh, the Lord Kando's Letter by Hugo von Hofmannsthal. Um, I don't remember much about it. Uh, there's uh, one short story in here. Anyway, it's a couple things. Chess Story by Stephen Zweig. I, I loved it. It's so fun. It's, you can read it in the afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> Beware of Pity, another great Zweig novel. Zweig. Journey into the Past. Zweig. <laughs> Confusion. Zweig. Uh, Pitch Dark by Renita Adler. This is a really fun... I read it in the summertime. It's a perfect time to read this. The, Cre the, the Three Christs of Ypsilanti by Milton Rokic. Um, it's a non-fiction work. It's uh, th th three um, mental patients that all believe they're Jesus Christ and they just stick them in a cell together and have them hack it out. Uh, the Inferno of Dante. This is a translation by Kieran Carson. I liked it a lot. The Living Thoughts of Kierkegaard. This would be a bedtime, bedtime book. I haven't read it all the way through, but I liked it. Uh, Prometheus Bound by Aeschylus. Or, uh, however you say that. <laughs> uh, and then more. Okay. I was actually just looking at this uh, this yesterday and, and this morning. This is The Adventures and Misadventures of McCroll by uh, Alvaro Mutis. And so I just finished reading Nada by Carmen La Ferrette, which was translated by Edith Grossman, who translated um, Don Quixote. And I looked up other things that she had done, and she this is her translation. I bought this years ago and never touched it. Now I'm really interested in it. Uh, like Death, uh, a really good late short novel by Maupassant. Uh, All About Hat Hatter by G.B. Deseni. It's a really curious, funny book. Uh, playful language. It has one of the best back cover quote exchanges I've ever seen. So we have a quote by T.S. Eliot. In all my experience, I have not met with anything quite like it. Talking about the book right below it. This is Saul Bellow. I didn't read many books while writing Augie, Augie March. Uh, one I did read and love was All About Hatter. So what about All About? I hate to be siding with T.S. Eliot, but what can you do? <laughs> A collection of Early short stories by Chekhov, and this is compiled by Chekhov. These were uh, the stories he felt were his best work at that time. The Anatomy of Melancholy by Robert Burton, giant brick of a thing. Um, this is like a tabletop book or coffee table book. I've, I've, I haven't read, read the whole thing, but it's fun to look at. Uh, Nature Stories by Jules Renard. This is a bestiary, and um, that's things like it's illustrated and then this is the worm you can see one there lying down stretched out like a lovely noodle uh, okay this is uh, Echo Homo by Nietzsche Uh, okay, short stories by Henri de Balzac. So along with 
all of those novels that are contained in the human comedy, there's also these little short stories where the characters that we meet kind of pop up again. Great. Uh, Schlump. I didn't really care for this. It, um, it's uh, <clears throat> like a World War One picaresque novel. Uh, the main character's nickname is Schlump, and I felt like um, the, the, the tone was just off. There's um, kind of like slapstick humor, and um, maybe I just didn't get the joke. <laughs> uh, novels in Three Lines by Félix Fignon. This is a French anarchist, and he made an art of writing headlines. He would have been great on Twitter. Um, Let me see. His cancer was intolerable, so Monsieur Henrion of Chatillon, Laborde, Saint a Marnier, cut his throat with a knife and a razor. Uh, some of them are very, you, you, there's a lot of context that goes into them. Uh, as it fell from a scaffolding simultaneous with Dury, a mason of Marseille, a stone crushed his skull. So they're just news reports. They're all they're all like that. Everyone dies. Um, Everything flows by Vasily Grossman. Um, a kind of new to me Russian writer. He has. Um, I haven't read everything by him. This one was uh, quite good, and uh, Life and Fate was incredible. Um, and then there's Stalingrade, which is the prequel to Life and Fate. I have it. I still haven't read it. It's going to be a, a commit, commitment whenever I get to it. Uh, records of Shelley, Byron, and the author, Edward and John Trelawney. And uh, it was interesting. It's just um, like a personal reportage of um, these larger-than-life characters getting along and not getting along. Uh, Jacob von Gunten by Robert Walser. This was recommended to me by um, a few friends from years ago. They were raving about Robert Walser, and then I found it was an NYRB classic. It's like a boarding school in in Germany. I I, I don't remember it, but I, I don't know. Let's see. Um, Don Juan by Moliere. This is an Oxford World's Classic. There's other plays in there. Um, selected Letters by Seneca. I love this. Um, it's like reading Cicero's letters, but better for me. Uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Novella by Truman Capote. I was very surprised. I thought it was going to be quite different than what it turned out to be. Afloat, another uh, novel, short novel by Montpassant. I love everything written by Montpassant. Uh, Ficciones by Borges. I've only read one or two of these. I, I'm still not getting along with Borges. Uh, the Paris Review. Uh, I, I buy these things every once in a while, and they're just never interesting. I, I always think that I'm going to get get something out of them. I never do. I'm going to throw that away. Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. And I read this like it was a Netflix series or something. Uh, I took my time with it, kept it at my bedside, and it's great. It's great fun, and it's um, like lewd, lewd and ribald, and uh, there's adventures, and... Um, I, I liked it. Okay. Uh, Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. Uh, there's a scene in this book that uh, shocked me. I, and I'm not easily shocked by a book. There was one line that uh, floored me. Uh, Last Steps, The Late Writings of Leo Tolstoy. Um, in a kind of overall mediocre, uh, some of them are okay. Other ones, some of the religious writing or the peasant stories didn't, didn't really do it for me. Uh, 
Um, an early work by Samuel Beckett. This is more pricks than kicks. <laughs> I like Samuel Beckett. Uh, this is a Barnes and Noble uh, classics of the Wasteland and other poems. Um, and I've gone back to this quite often. Uh, a play by T.S. Eliot, The Cocktail Party. <clears throat> uh, memoirs from Beyond the Grave by Francois René de Chateaubriand. And I haven't read this. I, I the first time I encountered it was the NYRB classics, which is up there somewhere. This is a different translation, and uh, at some point I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, he, he's a he's a beautiful writer, and it, it's such an interesting. Um, it's a memoir, just the story of his life. Um, it's amazing. Uh, the Life of Jesus by Ernest Renan. Handsome little uh, modern library. Um, it's, it's like that Tolstoy book that I showed in another video where it's the Gospels all kind of put together into one chronological um, story. There's other things going on. Um, and so this is book five of that uh, recent um, endeavor to translate uh, Proust, and there's all these different translators that did it. It come out came out maybe ten years ago or something. Lydia Davis did the first one, and then um, a different person did each one. This is um, The Prisoner by Proust, and uh, there's some strange like legal publishing issue where the um, the later books still aren't available in America, but in the States, but they, they're they in Europe and England. So th this is the last one that we have. There's like two more, two or three more in this edition. And I like Proust. Um, know How On, Company, Ill Seen, Ill Said, Worstwood Ho, Samuel Beckett. As grim as it gets. Uh, the Lydia Davis translation of Madame Bovary by Flaubert. One of my favorite novels. One of my favorite translations. Um, and the New Testament, translated by David Bentley Hart. And I've spent a lot of time with this now. Um, and it's <clears throat> incredible. It, it, it's... Um, well, I don't know. It, it's, it's the Bible. Uh, yeah, it's a new translation by one, a single person doing the whole thing. It's incredible. Um, and that's it. We're at shelf 18. Um, I, I kind of hurried through because there's so many books here. I don't know what we're going to be doing. Um, let me know if any of these interests you. You can send me an email. Um, but um, let me know if you have any thoughts. <laughs> Um, that's all. So uh, thank you. Leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching. Bye.